Hi guys, it's Airstuff FPV here, and in this video, I'm showing you guys what I did to the Silver Eagle V-Tail Pusher design to optimize it for an upcoming second endurance flight. For you guys who are curious about the basic specifications before the upgrade is the following. It is a custom build with a wingspan of 1.6 meters and an 87.5 centimeter length. Its power plant is a 600 kV motor with a 12 by 6 prop and 60 amp ESC. It's all up weight with a 9,600 milliamp hours four cell lithium ion is close to two kilograms and covers over 60 kilometers of trip distance per battery on average with 15 to 20 kilometers of signal range before GPS kicks in and flies it back with the return to home feature. So as it was designed in the build video, the aircraft had an extended straight lined triangular nose and behind that a panning servo with an FPV camera and an external camera attachment for HD video gear. These modifications were super practical and enhanced FPV experience unlike the aerodynamic deficiencies. And since the panning servo somehow bugged out the flight controller one day, I disconnected it and never used it ever since and thought to completely remove the unit and stick with the FPV camera only. The pointy nose section was worn out on the underside and had visual damage by long use and rough landing so it was removed as well. And the antenna mast of the video transmitter was optimized to aim at the sweet spot for aerodynamics and still decent video range so I removed the two lengthy carbon masts and replaced them with a single one with shorter length. And the most important replacement was the flight controller. The old Maytek F405 wing which worked flawless for about two and a half years finally showed its time was up and had to be replaced. This was because after 30 minutes of cruising around, the flight controller randomly cuts throttle and strikes the servos with random PWM values. This caused the plane to literally glitch in mid-flight and stall for about 3-5 to five seconds before I could regain control. And by removing the old flight controller and disconnecting all the cables and wires, I had to label the wires and solder up the new Matek F405 Wing V2. Plug the cables back in, flash and configure the new flight controller, do some final tweaks and then I went ahead to work on the new nose section. The nose of the aircraft was constructed from the fuselage itself and didn't have an additional length applied to it like it was designed with at first. This was considered after knowing it'll carry no HD camera and pan and tilt servos in the nose and have the FPV camera fixed inside for the foreseeable future. The process building the new nose section was straightforward by marking and cutting the arc of the nose at the size and after positioning the FPV camera inside, creating the top layer to be glued and taped over the curve and create the new nose. The underside of the aircraft was starting to show peels of tape and holes of punctured foam by rocks and stones. So I taped the sides and underside with one layer of strong duct tape which does the trick. At last I refined the curved wingtips by removing the tape and smoothing out the top and bottom foam with sandpaper a bit more than before and covering it back up with less tape which turned out great. So after this process which took me between 6 to 8 hours in total, I only had to replace the 12 by 6 prop with a 12 by 8 for better flight performance and then took it out on the field to set it up and test it out. Surprised to see three amps. Well, it's climbing with just three amps. Wow. I didn't expect that at all. Nice glide over the uh, ground station and over myself. with the slang of today you would call that a W so I might call this whole modification uh, project a big success and a W because three amps is not what I expected and this is just two and the thing is, when the motor cuts, you would see that the whole flight controller and everything else is drawn approximately an amp from the battery. So what you're actually seeing is that the motor draws one point something amps, just one. 
and it's quite breezy there's no sun so I wouldn't say there are thermals I have two of my lithium-ion batteries charged up so I could fly actually for a whole day yeah it easily maintains two and a half The breezes of today are uh, scaled two and a half, so they aren't strong, neither are they weak. But I mean, that doesn't hold the plane back from, you know, the passes that it does with just three amps and just two and a half amps into it. I noticed something very weird. my uh yeah this is kind of an issue it's gonna be an ugly ugly landing So there's this thing with the new 405 wing V2 flight controllers that I overlooked when I set it up. You have to bridge a little gap between two solder pads inside the flight controller to power the other half of the servo rail because they are dead by default. I tried to have the VTL servos on the active side because I already thought about exact scenarios like this but I was convinced that it would be worse when my ailerons would cut out and it'd be stuck at an angle which I could not recover with my rudder control. So that would mean it would be stuck at a turn which would be worse over time and cause an irrecoverable crash. So instead of taking out the flight controller again, I provided power from the active rail to the inactive rail via cable which worked until somehow the servos barely worked in mid-flight that caused me to harshly land the aircraft, but luckily without signs of damage. So it turns out the uh, duct tape was quite effective in that controlled crash landing. Um, it took the beating very, very well. There is no wrinkles on the fuselage at all. My solution now is to install a separate BEC for the tail servos and hope it'll be flawless from there. But unlike that incident, and after all, the modifications on the aircraft definitely showed improvement within the somewhat breezy weather conditions. Maintaining altitude with 3 amps is rare for a design like this, so I'm definitely happy about the results I got from that flight. The only thing now is to get the BEC in, wait in for a calm and sunny day to see for how long the aircraft can actually endure. But until then I have to just test the aircraft one more time in a remaiden and test all the functions and see how it does and then it would be actually ready from there. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.